and I'll tell you about two problems that might follow up the surgery. For example, infection. Patients sometimes call on the second evening saying, Doctor, I feel some pain under... I wonder if there's an infection. The infection doesn't occur right away. In order for an infection to occur, the wound must be infected and microbe must grow out there. So it takes three to four days at least. At best, infection will show up at the end of a week or so. It doesn't show earlier. Since the surgery is in genital area, it is also sensitive to infection. In other words, since, it's, since it is considered as one of the contaminated parts of the body, the genital area may be infected. We cannot say that it wouldn't happen. There have been few cases where I saw an infection after the surgery. It happened with patients who immediately opened up the dressing. The patient went to his hometown and opened the dressing up that evening. Why? Because he wondered how the results were. If you open the dressing immediately, infection is likely to occur within three days. Because the stitching in that area is just melting. It is contaminated dirty part of the world. This is the reason why we recommend not to open it up for three days. Don't take a shower, keep that area covered at least for three days. The stitches need to hold there so that there is no infection and no germs. <coughs> so, you can take a shower in the evening of the third day, but again, don't open the dressing up or take a shower earlier that day. As I said, going to the sea or the pool is prohibited for at least two weeks. Apart from that, there will be some edema in the first days. Of course, the results you see when you see open the dressing on the third day is not the final result. There is still some swelling. That swelling edema passes in two to three weeks. That swelling edema passes in a week or two. The penis loses a little volume, but it takes six months to get the full results with the loss of fat and so on. Don't accept anything you see before six months as a result. So, don't call me in the second month or send me a message making complaints like I cannot see the languation because when it is erected, it is swollen here and the fat melted there because it's just too early. There's no point in answering these in the second month or so. You have to complete six months. Apart from that, what patients are al always afraid of is cutting the suspensory ligament. They ask, would there be any problems cutting the suspensory ligament? I tell and I explain over and over again. I don't actually want to answer anymore. You will not have any problems after the cutting the suspensory ligament. You will not face problems. Patients are truly afraid of cutting that tie. Oh my God. They worry that there will be numbness, loss of erection, loss of sensation loss of hardness, it will cause infertility, all sorts of things. Doctors also use this fear of to the patients. They say, we don't cut the ligament, we elongate the penis without cutting it. All lies. So don't be a fool. There will be no elongation unless that tie is cut off. You will not have any problems after cutting the suspensor ligament. I suspect the doctorship of anyone who says there will be a loss of feeling, a loss of erection. Because if there is such an anatomical structure in the suspensor ligament, if there is a vessel, a nerve or any anatomical structure that would impair hardening, let them come and show it to me. Anatomically, there is a hair-like vein inside the suspensor ligament, which is close to the bottom. There is no structure other than that. There are no vessels or nerves, no anything to affect the erection. The doctor who says it can have an effect should explain me you are cutting this tissue and this causing that. They don't do that either. You will not have a problem in short term or long term with regard to cutting off that tie, period. Now let's stop with this suspensory ligament. It's not possible for you to have a problem with it anyway. Anatomically, it is impossible. But what you might have problems with is actually fat injection. Some doctors make a huge mistake. They don't perform elongation. They don't cut the ligament, but they thicken the penis. You are not doing the part where you will not have a problem. The part where it is impossible to experience any problem. You are instead doing the one thing that could result in a problem. In other words, the doctor is not aware of what kind of dangers, possible problems this may lead to. There are a few problems when it comes to fat injection. 
Listen, first, as I said, it's not something within our control. The patient's fat is good or bad. You won't find it in the literature. No article in the literature says what is good or bad belly fat. I will make a summary video on fat injection. I will explain in details. Fat has good and bad qualities. Good fat feels dry, holds for many years and doesn't matter. Bad fat, on the other hand, feels very watery, floats in the injector and has a dematious structure. You inject it by filtering, but most of it's lost. These are two different things. A problem with fat is that if you inject too much, even though the fat is good, the penis will be thicker than desired. This is a very serious problem. We have experienced this over the years. And we had a problem or two. The patient went to another clinic and had a fat injection. They are a clinic that does not perform elongation, but they do only fat injections and thickening. But they do put too much fat to make it good, but the guy's penis turned out like a wood. Years have passed, fat did not go away. Then the patient came to me. And when they inject too much fat, they also bury the penis inside because they didn't lengthen it. Let me tell you a case example now. You will see what the problem is. The patient has been injected too much fat without lengthening. The penis is embedded in fat. They, place, they placed fat like a primate. It is also an interesting thing to know how they were able to manage it, because I couldn't. I tried it once but failed. Let me tell you one, another thing. It makes the bottom of the penis thicker. The penis takes a primate-like shape. In other words, the penis must be like a rod like this in order to enter in the vagina. You want it thick and cylindrical, but for some reason that colleagues make it like a primate. And now the patient came to us saying that I'm going to get married. I want this situation to be fixed. This is something that we got results in the patients we have performed before. They don't lengthen, so we added an elongation procedure to the surgery. We just extended it. It becomes more natural when I add extension. When the penis is elongated, that thickness compensates. We just made an extension. The patient comes back and forth in the second month, the third month, and he complains, saying it wasn't what I wanted, etc., etc. Because the fat injection is too much, we have tried thinning once in another case. Thinning this injected excess adipose tissue is a very, very difficult task. It just doesn't work. Why? Because this fat tissue is not fibrous tissue. It's not fat anymore. You can't get it out. You cannot perform a liposuction or thin it out. Because we are talking about a hard fibrous tissue. You can only cut it and take it out. In that patient, we wanted to perform thinning. We did something like during this the surgery. We cut the foreskin like in circumcision and peeled the skin, facing a thick fatty tissue around it. It turned into a fibrosis tissue. We tried to thin it out, cut it like a joiner kebab and make it thinner. You can't cut it like that, brother. We gave up on that plan during the operation. We said, okay, let's remove all the fat. There's no other way. The body of the penis remained in the middle. We cleaned and removed the large tissue, fibrous tissue around it. The skin of the penis is now naturally loosened, enlarged. It remained like a balloon around it. We took the surplus out, but then blood accumulated in that cavity. Hematoma came, followed by an infection. The patient came back and forth. We deal with the patient about two years. Once again, we said never again. We will never perform thinning on a penis with an excessive fat injection. But then the first patient I mentioned came in. The man says, I didn't get the results I wanted. I'm getting married soon. His penis is too thick. We got results in all of our previous patients. We just added an elongation procedure to those cases. This patient keeps complaining. Too thick, too thick, whatever. By the way, he had his first fat injection four years ago. He comes to me at the beginning of this year to fix it. We had an extension since it wasn't done before, but lengthening does not satisfy the patient neither. He says, my penis is still too thick. This patient came back and forth several times and finally spilled the beans. 
it turns out that the girl this man is going to marry is a virgin. Look, consider this carefully when you have a surgery. Thickening too much is a very difficult thing to reverse. So everyone wants excessive fat injection in the first stage, especially the Arabic patients. Man, these men say, doctor, it should be like this. Let it be like that. It should be as big as my leg. It should be this thick. What if you do this now and if the fat you injected holds up and doesn't go away? If the patient has the possibility of marrying a virgin in, marrying a virgin in the future, then it would be a problem. If that happens, how are we going to slim down the penis? We are having a problem now with this patient. We told him, okay, get married, but there is nothing to do if you have a trouble in the future. We are going to remove all of that injected tissue. Because we cannot just cut it around like a donor kebab and make it thinner. Because that fat tissue didn't remain as an adipose tissue, it has now turned into a fibrous tissue. This is not our fault either. The patient should have thought about this four years ago. Probably four years ago, that lady did not exist. Then he wanted his penis to be thick like a wood. Now he says, this will make my job very difficult and so on. I mean, you cannot have a problem with the suspensory ligament in penis enlargement surgeries. There is no tissue in the suspensory ligament that would cause damage. The thing you might have a problem with is fat injection. I am telling this to my colleagues as well as, as well my patients. The thing that can be a problem is fat injection. There could be excessive melting in fat. You make some fat injections, add some fat again and it is complete. But if there is an excessive fat injection, it is difficult to thin it down. Therefore. There is an incident that I mentioned in the Congress. We take fat from the patient's belly. We see the structure of the fat when we take it out. I even have a video on this. Why is there a bruising in the belly? If you watch that video, you'll see it. Normally, if a large amount of fat is to be removed at the place where the liposuction is performed, a drug is injected first. It stops the bleeding in that area and the vessels constrict. You take the fat out after the bleeding stops, only the yellow fat comes out. The fat comes mixed with the fluid you injected, but there is no blood. There is no bleeding, so there is no bruising. But when we take fat for the penis, we don't inject such liquid. Why is that? Because we need to see the structure of the fat. We need to take the fat directly without injecting anything so that we can see if the fat feels dry or edematous. We should see its structure. So we take the fat directly. That's why the fat comes out a little bloody. What does that do? It may cause some bruising in that area. Sometimes bruising goes down to the testicles. The patient's testicles go all purple sometimes. Someone sent me a message again about the testicles that they turned purple, asking why it happened. Since we don't inject a drug that stops bleeding, why don't we inject such a drug? We need to see the structure of the fat. We, if we inject drugs, then we take that fat, it will be mixed with the drug, it will be watery anyways. We can't understand whether the medicine or the oil itself is edematous. We shouldn't inject any drugs to understand this. And this causes bruising. It doesn't matter, it goes away. If the fat feels dry when we take it, my advice is not to inject too much. Don't overdo it. Because most likely it will not melt. If the fat is edematous, it will dissolve a little bit. You can do a little more at an allowance for future melting. So, while taking fat, it is necessary to see its structure. I told you before in another video, we make a mistake in patients five or six years ago. At a time, we didn't have that much experience. The patient is calling me from Germany. Hey doctor, you performed the surgery one year ago. He says we are having problems since the last year. I asked what's the problem. He tells me, you said there would be melting in the fat, but it never melted. He says that for a year, his wife is hurting when the sexual intercourse happens. As I mentioned, we have been filming all our surgeries for 11 years or so. I looked at the mass video recording. The belly fat is dry. 
great adipose tissue like mashed potatoes. We poured it overnight, nothing was drained. If I had my experience there today, I wouldn't have put that much fat in it. But I thought it would melt a little in that guy. We injected a little too much fat. It shouldn't be done. We are getting more and more experience every day on these matters. And because every surgery has a video recording, and as a plus, we see many different cases. Patients come here from Europe who have lard in their nutrition. Patients from Turkey have only olive oil in their diet. We see the differences of these, and since we also have video recordings, we take a look at it as the patient comes for a follow-up, and that's why we had such good experience in that regard. We even got biopsies or something like that. On this percentage, I can clearly say this. If you inject excessive fat during the surgery and fat remains, if it holds, it's a problem. What's the worst case scenario? The patient could marry a virgin girl in the future. Here's a question to you. We have patients with whom we are experiencing such a problem right now. Most people think wrong. Everyone is afraid of the suspensory ligament. I don't understand why you're afraid of the ligament that much. Cutting that ligament is a process that takes about two minutes stops. Very simple. It doesn't cause any problems. It won't cause any problems in the future and it wouldn't lead to problems at an old age. The thing that could be a problem is the fat injection. Everyone is afraid of the suspensory ligament, but say okay to a fat injection. So strange. These are the things that I can talk about this issue right now. I wonder if there's anything I can't think of. Well, if there is, I will add it as a text under this video because these are things that we generally talk about with patients. Thanks for listening. From now on, I will try to prepare videos more often because now I have arranged such a corner in my house for video shootings. I used to go only on Sundays and shoot them at the clinic when the clinic was empty. On Sundays, I used to spend the whole day there, but now I have the opportunity to shoot the videos at home, even during the meal break. Here, I will tell you about points that should be addressed about these surgeries. So, see you in the next video.